I'm Carrie Dara, and welcome to the Grow Cedar Valley webinar series. Um, for those of you who have joined us before, each time, each topic or each session is a different topic. Um, today, we'll be visiting with our area superintendents and administrators on K-12 education in the Cedar Valley, a much, much different picture than even two months ago. So uh, obviously information I, I know everybody will be interested in. So with us, we have Tom Novotny from, he's the administrator for the Cedar Valley Catholic School System. Uh, Jane Lindemann, Superintendent of Waterloo Schools, and Andy Petit, Superintendent of Cedar Falls Schools. Um, so I'll ask each of you to just share, you know, a few minutes um, uh, introduction and summary of what you've been dealing with and, um, and eventually towards the end of our conversation or at any time you want to, um, kind of where you see this going and how you see a lot of the plans that you've had to make um, quickly um, and how that's going to affect the rest of, um, of what's going on in the summer and fall. So. Andy, I'll let you go ahead and, and start, if you would, please. Yes, I appreciate it greatly, and thank you for uh, Grow Cedar Valley for giving us this opportunity, and certainly appreciate your leadership during these uncertain times, uh, as we do during all of the, the normal times as well. Um, I'm just going to share my screen real quick, if that's okay, and <laughs> just uh, uh, give a, a little snapshot of some of the things that we have been uh, doing and working on. Um, we uh, certainly... Uh, know and always say thank you to our, our tremendous staff, uh, our parents, our students for the work that they're doing, but we've put together a, a plan that's really focused on engagement. How do we ensure that our, uh, our competencies, those essential standards and skills are being met uh, um, each and every day by our students? And, and we put together just a, a plan that really highlights what that looks like, what are the templates, what are the expectations, and, and making sure that we can move forward fairly uh, fluidly through this process. And that's been very, very uh, helpful as we look at consistency across our district. Just to kind of give uh, uh, just a snapshot of some of the things that we have done or continue to do. This is the uh, just one example. This is a um, fifth grade uh, grade level team at one of our buildings, and, and we really target uh, what are those online activities that we are pushing out for families to use as we've uh, some of the other districts uh, locally have really worked hard to provide uh, school issue devices into each of our households as well as uh, working to get everybody connected but we also have unplugged activities too that will be tied back into what is the learning target and what is that expectation for those uh, students as they do work from home um, again we we really try to provide levels of, of engagement, uh, opportunities for uh, showing and showcasing learning. Uh, it's been very, um, I guess, time specific in a lot of different ways, but I just can, cannot uh, say enough about how well our staff has responded, how well our parents and our students have responded. And, and we certainly appreciate the level of work that's gone into this to ensure a high quality educational experience. Very good, very good. Thank you, Andy. Um, Tom, how about you? How, what are things, what's going on with you in the Cedar Valley Catholic Schools? Well, you, well we were uh, fortunate enough that uh, when all this uh, came about, we happened to be on spring break. And so we had some additional days to plan rather than having to shift right into kind of a crisis mode. Uh, so we were very intentional about giving our teachers uh, extra days of prep before we rolled out our plan, uh, very similar to the other uh, area districts. Uh, we are a one-to-one -one, uh, school system, sixth grade, six through 12. So we had to get devices into the hands of our K-5 kids. Uh, we had the devices, uh, so we had to just set up a day where they could drive through and pick up a device. Uh, but that extra days of planning also allowed us to prepare uh, additional supplemental materials for students who might receive title services, as well as uh, English as a second language service as well. So uh, the St. Ed's kids all got a bag full of uh, school goodies. Uh, normally, probably not things they're excited to get. Uh, in this case, they're very excited about it. Uh, that process allows uh, us to use that again uh, this week. There are some iPads that needed some updates. So uh, parents set up individual appointments, come drop the bag off, and then pick it back up again. So uh, that's been a very fluid process for us. Uh, we have been uh, doing continuous learning then since the Wednesday we came back from break in March. Um, and the levels of engagement uh, fluctuate a little bit each day, depending on what's happening in our community. Uh, one thing that was new for us was supply for the federal food waiver program. And we're serving about 3,500 
uh, meals a week, which is in addition to what Waterloo Schools is doing. So I think that just highlights the need in our community uh, for things beyond just schooling at this point that we're trying to pro provide for kids. Right. Um, good. Very well, good. And quickly, so. Yeah, no, good. Really, very good. Enjoy. I mean, I think, I mean, I'll, I'll ask Jane to speak next, but I think the technology piece is a question that would be interesting for people to understand how you navigated all of those, especially the households that have several kids and, um, you know, sometimes they weren't probably not prepared to have, you know, four different devices or whatever. So, uh, but Jane, let's go ahead with you, if you would, please. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, I, like like the other two, I really appreciate this opportunity to share. Uh, it has been quite a quite a feat to get the communication out there for something that is completely foreign. You know, we're trying to share a message on something that people don't have a lot of, you know, understanding or background, and and that includes the staff and the superintendents. Right, we're just trying to figure this out, and so. I've heard several people say uh, we're making decisions now for things that we're not going to really know are right or wrong for the next, you know, maybe 12 months from now, we're going to know. So we're doing the very best we can. Um, I, I would start out by saying our, our staff has been amazing and um, we've, we've really made great gains. Um, so I would just like to, I'm going to share just a little bit of our continuous learning plan, just because this is something that might, you know, pictures sometimes help. So I just want to share my screen as well. And um, see if I can do this, you go. obviously. So um, very quickly, um, let me just go through, you know, we've been really, um, oops, I want to get rid of this here. Um, We've been really um, sending the message that we're open for business and we're continuing to educate our kids. We did choose the voluntary plan like many of the other districts, but um, considering that um, our voluntary really is expected. And so we've had some questions from our public about that. They've asked questions about voluntary saying, you know, it seems like it's it's um, required. And we said, yeah, it really is. Even though we're still under the volunteer, we really expect that people would do that. So we have several components. Um, the, the lessons, we're providing lessons, we're asking for assignments, we're asking the teachers to engage, and we're requiring feedback on their work. And so, and then supporting them in, in quite a different variety of, of non-instructional methods too. I would also drive any of our viewers to check out, um, we were actually, uh, lucky, I guess, to be hosted uh, as the uh, feature district on the Department of Ed, Ed uh, the Department of Ed website. And so if they just Google Iowa Department of Ed, they can see an article that defines a little bit more about Waterloo's, um, Waterloo's voluntary plan. So um, we also have, you know, the, the access to technology was a huge issue for us. And it, to be honest, it really still is. We still have, you know, probably a thousand kids who are not, uh, not connected. And so we're working hard to do that, but um, we're continuing continuing those efforts. And so we're working with Mediacom and, and we have hotspots that we're giving out. So we continue to do that. We're hooking up, you know, people every single week, but um, you know, that, that still continues to be an issue. Um, we, like some of the other districts, had to really work hard to get our teachers up to speed because we've online teaching and using technology has, you know, in some way, it's been a little bit of an option in the past, you know, we, we push people to do that, and we give professional development, but right now it's not an option, it, it is the way. So we have required professional development that all of our staff are participating, including yours truly. And so um, every week we have assigned things that they have to do, and we do track that. And so giving some feedback, it's been absolutely amazing. So, um, and, and probably the other piece on the data, we are really tracking student engagement to the best we can. We have um, all of our numbers are in from our first week with last week with, with our elementary. And so we're hitting about 80% of our students participating and, and some of that at varied, various levels, uh, varied levels, about 60% about are participating really quite a bit. And then we have another 20% who are participating, but not as, you know, as much as what we would want and then we've got about 20% of our of our elementary kids who are not yet participating and so that will continue to be our biggest effort to try to get our kids um, working through get, getting them engaged so that's that's definitely and then our middle school and high school numbers are coming in right now this week uh, trying to track our 11,000 kids and, and working on that so feedback then the last thing I was going to mention is we are working really hard to get feedback from our stakeholders on um, 
you know, what's what's going on and, and what they think about it. And for us, the stakeholders really are, you know, first of all, our staff, we've, we've got some things coming back in, but we're going to do a real strategic way to get feedback. And then our community will be getting some surveys and specifically our parents, we want to know what they think. And then our students are going to be weighing in and giving some formalized feedback on what's working for them, what's not working for them, because we, um, we are gearing up for the, um, the summer, preparing for what are we gonna do to respond to kids coming back in the fall. We know that we're gonna need to do a pretty extensive, um, pretty extensive assessment of our students right away when they come back in math and literacy specifically to find out where they are. We believe strongly that a gap is being created for all of our kids, um, but for some it's minimal and probably can be um, turned around or mitigated in a short amount of time, but for some, it's going to take some time, you know, for some of our students, we think it's going to take months and months and, you know, a year to, to get everybody back on track. And so we're gearing up for that, um, looking at summer school and, and with the, the situation, the way it is, we're actually doing some contingency planning and looking at whether we want to do it. Um, you know, we're planning on maybe doing something, um, doing something on um, in person, but also gearing up for a contingency plan of doing summer school virtually, which is not our first pick, but but that certainly is something that we're doing. And then um, finally, I think Andy and Tom, all, all of us, this is not unique to Waterloo, but we are also gearing up, as is the state of Iowa, for uh, what happens if this happens again next year. Because we know that, you know, we hear the reports that there could be a, a second wave come through or, you know, what happens. And so all of us are planning. And I think with the state's direction, they are telling us that they're going to do some required planning um, for schools. Because if they do this again, voluntary, it sounds like voluntary will not be an option next year. And so everybody will have to go required. And so with that coming up, potentially, you know, we hope we do all of this planning and we never need this again but we don't want to get caught unprepared. Um, in some ways, I think we all got caught unprepared. The, nobody nobody, you know, was, was ready for, for going completely online. And so while I think we have done amazingly well, and I'm super proud of our staff and our parents and our students for stepping up the way that they had, there is no doubt for me that it is, it is not equal to what we were doing before. So um, we're, you know, that's the bittersweet piece of it. Right. So that would just be a, a, a quick update from Waterloo School. Very good. Well, you kind of touched on it, Jane, and I would ask both Andy and Tom the same thing. So what does summer look like for Cedar Falls schools, Andy? We're uh, still walking and working through some of those. As Jane said, we're getting some guidance from the state. Really, our focus is going to continue to be, you know, what are some of those essential skills that we might have gaps on from some, from some of our students uh, to ensure that we are filling those gaps. And, and some of that's going to be remediation time, some of that's going to be some targeted summer school, uh, some of it's going to be using some of the care, CARES funds potentially to uh, enact some more robust programming. So we're still trying to help define what those specific numbers look like for us. As Jane said, some of that's going to be through formative assessments uh, to be able to help gauge where students are at and what some of those gaps could be uh, so we can make the best determinations to really focus on what are the student needs so we can put the right uh, uh, platform pieces in place. Um, you know, with the, 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 the waiver for early start dates, that's going to be another interesting component. Um, what does that look like for, you know, actual relationships uh, and everything else that we have within uh, our complex system? So it's, there's just a lot of dynamics that we're still working through. How about you, Tom? Uh, very similar to Andy and Jane. Uh, we're looking at uh, some summer school opportunities. I believe very strongly, like Jane mentioned, this need, really needs to be done in person. Uh, we're tracking our student engagement as well um, and really want to be able to find out who's missing out right now and how can we bring them back to the uh, table, so to speak, over the summer. Uh, we'd want to do it in small increments. We don't want anybody to be overwhelmed thinking that we're thinking of a eight to four day for all of July and August. I mean, that's not the idea. Uh, we want to understand their human growth and development. Uh, they still need a summer. They're still kids. Uh, it's just as important that they have time to get outside and go back to the park and play and those kinds of things to socialize. But uh, we're looking at uh, in-person summer school opportunities. Uh, we'll have a backup plan as well if we need to go virtual. Um, not as strong as it would be as if it were in person, but uh, keeping all options open. Uh, and then we haven't approached the start date conversation yet. That's a little further down the road, I think, for us. Right, right. Um, and so are you heading out, Andy? 
I, was hey, just dude, ask, I apologize. I have another no, commitment that I have no, to do. No problem. I, I was just going to ask, and uh, Jane and Tom can weigh in. I was just going to ask. So obviously, all of this was handled very, very quickly, and you're and you can't be uh, you can't be disappointed in the way that your staff and um, everyone responded quickly to get keep the students engaged and um, in front of them. Is there anything that you've realized from this quick change in way you do business, so to speak? that may be an opportunity to continue? Is there anything that you've recognized it might be a way that is gonna be uh, um, more advantageous for you to continue doing it? Um, Jane. Yeah, I would, I would say the one thing that we have learned that will continue is really the, the online resources and the tools that, that our staff is learning um, ha has been amazing. I, we have had really good professional development around the area of technology, but to be honest, there's so much going on in our lives sometimes that we don't take advantage of what's right in our, you know, right, right in front of us. This has necessitated everyone taking advantage of the PD because you can't serve the kids unless you're doing it online. And so the resources that have been at our fingertips have they they are changing the way we will do business forever right. um I, I i mentioned earlier that i'm doing the professional development along with my staff but you know we're sending out a menu of options you know for our our um maybe less savvy tech people you know and so they're taking kind of a basic that we have intermediary and we have advanced and so every week everybody's logging in and it really is changing the way it's already changed the way that i am a leader, um, just the technology access. So that is that, you know, you we, there, there are blessings out there. I mean, this has been absolutely horrible, but there, there's also some blessings there. And if you look for them, they're, they're there. And, right, and that is right. one of them. Right. How about you, Tom? Uh, I echo a few of those same thoughts. Um, we've offered the technology PD in the past in collaboration with Central Rivers. Uh, oftentimes that, you know, it's funny and exciting the day they're there and then they walk away and they forget all about it. Uh, now, if, if you didn't already know how to do this, you have to do it uh, every day. So we've had some uh, teachers who have to come into the building and uh, they have to get some one-on-one -on -one support. Um, and then uh, again, they, they found that this is much uh, more effective and efficient than the way they had been doing some aspects of their class. So again, I agree that I see that continuing. Uh, you know, Hopefully there's a conversation down the road uh, schools can have in the state of Iowa about you know maybe on snow days, uh, we've proven that we can do this and that it's uh, almost as valuable as being in person. Um, you know, I'm not talking about canceling full day of the school, but, you know, we get hit with some hard storms. Um, is, is this an avenue that we could uh, pursue in the future? So I'd like to see that conversation happen in the state, and I'm sure it will. Interesting. Well, and similar to what you said, um, as far as, you know, you're kind of diving in the deep end, um, maybe without a life jacket to figure this out from the business side and the business community and internally for us, um, you know, it's like working remotely. There are a lot of companies that are never really thought they were confident, they weren't confident or comfortable with that remote technology relationship, and they had to do it. I mean, they just, you just didn't have a choice. You had to do it if you wanted to continue to communicate and connect. Um, and there are some real, as you said, blessings and advantages that people are seeing to having that, um, that option uh, for communicating and connecting with people that they need to on a daily, sometimes hourly basis. So, um, I think we're all learning that we are, can be more resourceful than we ever thought we had to be. So, um, as I said, we want to get done before the, the governor um, gets on with her uh, briefing, but what would you like, in parting for the two of you, what would you like um, the viewers or the audience to um, know or take away, however they can help either better understand how you're dealing with all of this or help be helpful in how either with communication or hands-on experience, or what what would you like those who are watching to um, take away from their time with you this morning? Tom, what did, if you have some thoughts, go ahead. Sure, so um, I'd repeat a lot of the same message you're seeing in the local media. Uh, we're all in this together. Um, please understand that our teachers are parents. Uh, they have their own children at home. Right. Uh, we know their spouses are at home working with them. That puts a lot of people in the house together that aren't normally there together during the day. Um, so while we can't offer an eight to four school day right now, uh, we are offering what we think uh, is a fine balance between 
hours of engagement in schoolwork, as well as uh, trying to provide some uh, emotional, mental health kind of supports and uh, giving kids uh, that knowledge that it's okay to go do something else for a while and then come back to your learning uh, remotely. Uh, we've gotten some feedback from our stakeholders that, uh, you know, this is too much or this isn't enough. So we're trying to really reach that middle of uh, with all that's going on in our community, uh, how can we help our kids not uh, lose too much uh, and uh, stay in support of those people who are still on the front lines uh, and fighting this firsthand. Um, you know, we have a lot of parents who are working at both hospitals in town. So our thoughts and prayers go out to them as well and hope they stay healthy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Jane, how about you? Yeah, uh, I guess the, the final message I would say is it really has been all hands on deck. I'm so proud of the way that people have, you know, actually been in their lane, but been out of their lane the whole way. Um, people are doing and supporting each other in ways that they've, they've not had to do before, maybe should have been done, but, but is being done now. So the flexibility that people are coming to the table with, especially, you know, our staff, our families who are supporting kids in, in ways that, you know, it, it, it's foreign, but they somehow they're making it work. Um, I think that, you know, maybe my parting word would be that we have got our work cut out for us in um, the, the emotional well-being of our families and our kids and our staff for that matter. Um, we're trying to assess that all the way through right now, but we have, you know, I've, I've talked a little bit about um, with our staff about being in the same boat. People say, well, you know, we're all in the same boat, but we're really not in the same boat. You've seen things going around social media about that, but we have people for whom this is hitting this is hitting them way differently from what they, it is hitting somebody else. And so our job really right now and this summer, and especially this fall, when we get our babies back in our buildings, we've got some, we've got our work cut out for us to find out, you know, where, where they are and how we can support them emotionally, because you can't learn unless you're well um, emotionally and, and physically. And so that, you know, that, that's something that is something we think about every, every moment of the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you both for your time. We know how crazy your world is, um, like everybody else's, but in different ways. So the fact that you were able to carve out uh, this time with us this morning, and I really would like to invite you back maybe middle of the summer when we have more idea what the fall might look like and really get out in front of the messaging that you want people to be aware of and embrace and be supportive of before we get, um, before we get to the end of August or September. So let's plan on that. That would be great. Thank you. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, Carrie. Okay, thank you. And for those of you who are watching, next Tuesday we'll have another uh, webinar session, and we'll be talking about employee engagement. So uh, please join us. And if you're um, going to stay on the the line for a while, you'll be able to get on Facebook and listen to the governor with her briefing today as well. So everybody, take care, stay safe, um, and have an almost weekend, good weekend that's almost here. So we'll talk later. Thanks so much. Bye bye.